Okay guys, I had to charge my phone up, but this is uh, what I had accomplished since the phone charge is half of this piece right here. I'm working in this uh, flat area on each side of this piece that goes in the handle. So I'm making that now. I have the drill press set, uh, set up kind of like a little milling machine. And any of you guys with the milling machine know how inaccurate typically this process is on a drill press like this. The vice isn't as good, isn't as robust as a milling machine, but we're taking things nice and slow and we're making it work. So that's where we're at right now. So you can see I placed the part down flat against the shim back behind here and so I pressed down on this and tightened up the the vise and so this should be nice and flat and square across the surface in parallel to the uh, one uh, the indentation on the other side so we have two indentations this piece being parallel with the one on the opposite side so that's what we're working on now I have to mill the new one down to where I have an eighth of an inch gap on the round portion versus the flat, flat portion and three eighths in width from here and then when I get done uh, before I finish I want to make sure that the width between this point and this point is seven sixteenths. Okay guys, now I have the part installed in the vise and I am utilizing the two flat sides that I machined earlier to get me square and straight up and down in the vise in relationships to the end mill. And so what I'm doing now is I'm actually creating the square portion so it'll fit inside the latch itself and that's the part that's actually broken or wore out on this piece that's why we're here in the first place I set up to the same elevation as this collar and I have gone in 19 1 28ths of an inch all I have to do now is just loosen up I have these fairly snug so I can still operate the uh, in and back I don't know if that's the X or the Y uh, access but all I have to do is just loosen up the clamp, turn it 180 degrees and put it back in. And now I just have to machine this other side without moving the vise this way. It should come up to the same distance on this side as it is on the other side. So all I have to do is run the vise in this way and it should be turn out exactly the same. Okay, let's take a measurement and see how that turned out in relationship to the old one. And it's right on. Okay, now I can just take and utilize this and run this back and forth and leave this in, in, inside. Now I have to go back and take this measurement here again of 964 keeping my elevation the same with my end mill. I'm just going to work into that nice and slow a little bit at a time If the cutter's working rotating this way, you want to kind of go work into your your material going this way because then it then the bit is digging into it instead of 
away from it. Uh, don't know if that makes any sense, but it's, it chatters a lot less and feels a lot better if you go in the other this way. A lot smoother cut. I don't have a big fancy mill, so I'm just having to use this drill press. Not really designed for this kind of work, but it's working. I want this to fit real tight, so that's why I'm taking so long to make sure that it's precise, because I don't want any slop in this little square keyway and the uh, latch because I can work back and forth and then would end up with the uh, same problem that we had with this guy there we go nice tight fit okay well it's important to make sure that your cutter head is digging into the work instead of away from the work I don't know if that makes any sense or not. However, uh, that's what happens if you get carried away, especially on something that's as sloppy as this setup. Uh, you know, everything is kind of shaky. And I'm always having to tighten these up a little bit to take the slop out of the, uh, the traveling. But it's still got slop in it. So no harm done. It's still going to function okay other than that cosmetic thing and you'll never see it once I get it installed okay guys next I want to cut in cut in the square shape around the threaded bolt hole so turn this round piece into a square piece and so I took a measurement between the very inside of the square portion which is going to fit in here on the latch and measured to the outside of the round portion and so that's how much material I need to come in on each side so I have this clamped in here on the flat side so it's nice and it's nice and firm and then I also need to penetrate down to the collar here I can line up the cutter bit or end mill change the elevation okay now the end mill is traveling right up next to this collar. That's right where we will want it. Now I have to adjust in to the depth, proper depth, so I can come out with the slide this way. And I'll take a pass that I know is not too deep. I'll just work into the proper depth that I'm supposed to go. Okay, now that we have our our square side uh, finished our flat sides finished for where the handles going to be now the last thing we have to do is put in the hole for the handle and the holding pin to fit into so taking the measurements off of this actually I went to the drill index and got the drill that fit in here a uh, nice and snug then I took a measurement from the inside edge of that collar to the inside center of the hole and transferred that measurement over to the new piece and then put a center punch in the center of the post. I got this little piece of wood in here that's just the same size as this round stock. Make sure there's no little pieces of metal shavings in there. To interfere with our level and square I'm holding it down getting a pr pressure so it's nice and flat make our adjustments for the table okay the moment of truth for this little part we're over here at the vise where we need to drive this little pin and to our new part but first we have to make remember how to assemble all this stuff so remember that little 
rubber washer goes on first and then this washer goes on this metal piece and then this should line up to the handle okay I'm going to chamfer this hole a little bit that'll give me like a little 45 degree angle so that pin will hopefully seat into that hole so we'll try to assemble our parts again that works a lot better okay so this is how that's going to all assemble I can't put this latch piece on on this until I run this through the door and then the latch in from the back side and then we'll find a new bolt to put in on the back side with a washer marking where the center or center of the radius here is for this bend and now what we need to do is make this bend and try to duplicate this angle but before I do that I want to cut this off so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this ahead matching up my marks I'm going to go a, a, maybe an eighth of an inch further double check my work and we'll just cut the end of this off okay guys we're back on site well guys I believe I was a little premature in assembling this went ahead and put all this back together and I noticed this was binding pretty tight I took a good one apart and studied the way it was put together and so what I need to do is I need to disassemble this whole thing and then put the part that I fabricated in through this way and then put the handle on and then run the pin through as I have the handle on the door so we got to take this apart so we're over at the vise figure out how to line this up so I can disassemble the assembly All right, let's start over from scratch here. Disassemble this. Take this apart. Like so. Then I have to drop this in there like that. Now it looks better already. And I can probably just go ahead and put this on. You know, I think I'll I can afford to put a lock washer on there. All right. Put on a flat washer. And put the lock washer on my nut here and install. Okay, now that looks like the rest of them. Because underneath here, there's a looks like a washer underneath there, but it's that little standoff that I machined onto the part. Well, that's snug, but I'll tighten that up just a little bit more after I get the handle on the other side. That'll give me something to hang on to. So what we got to do is we got to put these two pieces on here. There's a little rubber grommet or washer, and then this metal part, then the handle and the through pin. Show you what that looks like from the outside without the parts attached. Have to hold it from the back. Push the rubber grommet on there and the metal part, washer, whatever you want to call it. Now this is going to be the tricky part. I use this punch on the other side to line the hole up, hold everything in place, and see if I can press it in with these uh, pliers here.
so the little pin I was having a hard time getting that to line up with the handle and also the fabricated part so I tapered the pin just a little bit so it would find the hole easy enough on the fabricated part and now the handle is going in nicely little bit of a wrestle and match to make that happen really couldn't get a hammer in there so I was faced to have to go this route and press it in there we go now I just put this hammer on the back side to hold this still now that this is assembled correctly it looks pretty good it was a little bit of a fight to get that back together again so we'll go ahead and tighten this up a little more all right now let's see if it works that works just fine That's going to work out real good. So we're back back in business when it comes to the bin doors. Okay, I hope that helps somebody out. If you have a small metal lathe and you have something like this that's broken, well, you don't necessarily have to find one. You can make one. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Take care and God bless.